things that are behind me. So when you get them with Minigan, 12, really quick. Uh, no, start there. So, Lamenta 12, too, and speak to the sons of Israel, saying, When a woman gives birth and bears a male child, she shall be unclean for seven days, as in the days of her menstruation, she shall be unclean. On the eighth day, the flesh of his portion shall be circumcised, then she shall remain in the blood of her purification for 33 days, she shall, shall not touch any consecrated thing or enter the sanctuary until the days of her purification are complete. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll stop there. So it's really interesting in this verse, like one of the really awesome things, you know, like God just totally like flew away the current knowledge at that time, scientific knowledge at that time of like what, what, were, what were good rules for like uh, health and, and and everything. And here's another one is uh you have in verse three on the eighth day the flesh of his portion shall be circumcised. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, really amazing here because the eighth day is generally known as like the first day that uh newborns can their blood can coagulate and they can actually have this done. So right. previous before that you know, the child would more than likely bleed out. But after this, that day, they, they, they can actually perform this. Yes. Um, another thing, like, you know, in, in, there's this, you know, this, this, the knowledge here, so predates anything else, it predates probably anything that we've had in uh, 3,500 years. Um, you know, if you're looking at 1446 to uh, you know, probably 18, 1850. So, yeah, something like 30, 300 years. But, uh, I just want to read this quote for you. This was from a man who was, he was looking into how to get, uh, he was making this super high tech, uh, nursery. And, uh, you know, how, how to make this, uh, more efficient. So, quote read, in 1847, an um, Trying and named Ignat Semel Wiseless uh, was the director of a hospital ward in Vienna, Austria. Many pregnant women checked into his ward, but 18% of them never checked out. One out of every six never seen treatment in his ward died of labor fever. Mm. Autopsies revealed pus under their skin in their chest cavities and in their eye line, etc. Semolet was distraught over the mortality rate in his ward and other hospital wards like in all over Europe. Newland noted that Australia, the Americas, Britain, Ireland, and practically every other nation had established a hospital suffered had established a hospital suffered a similar mortality rate. If a woman delivered a baby using a midwife, then the death rate, the death only fell to three percent. Yet, if she chose to use the most advanced medical knowledge and facilities in the day, her chance of dying skyrocketed and eventually. Hmm. So, all right, is that like not mind blowing? Like you have the most like high tech, you have like you know, uh, you know what would have been considered like super high tech procedures at the time and then John like John had it like right all along. <laughs> this, this doctor had one in six of the women who entered his hospital never walking out again, never really meeting their newborn, never getting to enjoy that. And between the way God had intended it, mm -hmm. thirty percent, ninety seven percent of those women were walking out of that hospital and, oh, and wow. getting to uh, go on with their lives and, and getting to uh, experience that newborn with it. And mm -hmm. I feel like after carrying a child for nine months mm -hmm. and then dying, I feel like there's a really anticlimactic thing that happens there. Uh, and I, I definitely I feel for that. So, another one of the things that completely predate uh, anything else that we had is. Uh, 
Even uh, when they get the women, John Jones is in the rules on food. So, and, and, uh, and he was saying in his sermon, like, you know, why the painting, God? Why the painting? And uh, so, you know, one of the things in, in Bacon is, uh, you know, Bacon carries a lot of bacteria and a lot of, uh, mm-hmm. A lot of like natural uh, parasites and things like that. So people will naturally get sick uh, if, if it's not so thoroughly. Um, so you know that's probably why John said the pagan. But uh, so if we look at Leviticus one uh, eleven one, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Lord spoke to him to Moses and to Aaron, saying to them, "Speak to the sons of Israel." These are the creatures which you may eat from all the animals that are on the earth. Whatever the God of the thus making split of and shoots the tongue among these animals you may eat. Nevertheless, you are not to eat of these among which shoot the tongue among the which divine the tongue. The camel for those shoot the tongue, it, and it does not provide the food is not clean to you. Likewise, the Shabbat. Uh, for no, 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 it shoots the sun, it does not know how to hunt in an unclean view. The rabbit also, for it shoots the sun, it does not know how to hunt in an unclean view. And the pig, for though it divides the hood, and thus making a split hoof, uh, does not shoot the sun in an unclean view. So, you know, what is the, uh, kind of top fill, top fifty test that we, we're now doing is, uh, they would uh, try and grow a plant in the, the like one of, of these animals and see uh, if the plant would actually grow or not. Um, and it turns out in all the animals that God like ox or sheep or calves or goats or deer, uh, the the animals grew much significantly. Uh, the plant grew much better. Uh, you have uh, 91% with ox, and 94% with sheep, and 80% with the cat, and 90% with goat and deer. But when you look at tanks and rabbit and camels and horses, they're all below, except for tanks, they're all below 50%. They compared to a control group where they just had regular water and a regular plant, which so you know, which can show us like significantly higher top ten uh, uh, you know. And then in verse eleven or verse twelve, uh John goes on to uh whatever in the water does not have fins or scales is abhorrent to you. Uh and it goes on, you know, included in that is low fish do not have scale. Uh and blowfish, I don't know if you know anything about blowfish, but they're really dangerous to eat. And if they're not made right, uh, I know as a, as a fisherman, uh, that, uh, you know, if you don't cook them right, you will end up getting really sick. And it turns out they are, so, 1,250 times more deadly than cyanide. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. How crazy is that? So... 1,250 times, but God is like looking out, like way out in the future, making sure that people, like, they're eating the right stuff, they, and nothing is going to happen to them. Uh, if we go on to, uh, you know, if you look at uh, verse 30, uh, God had said, uh, now, okay, well, if we start at 29, now these things are. Now these are to you the unclean among the swarming things, which swarm on the earth, the mole and the great lizard in all the, in all its time. Now this is not really to well known, but reptiles are natural carriers of salmonella. Hmm. So uh, you know, it, God is like well, he's just like so far ahead that he you know, and it said like the FDA has a restriction that if you're have a child under five then they warn you not to get a reptile for them because they will, you know, more than likely they can handle that sound with L from handling the animals. So, uh, you know, as 
another thing we can look at is in John's rule for you, just looking so far ahead, is uh, in chapter 13, or I'm trying to keep it nice and simple, not move too far here. Uh, in verse 45, uh, now it says, as per the leper who had the infection, his tongue shall be torn, and the hair, the hair of his head shall be uncovered, and he shall cover his mouth neck and cry, unclean, unclean, and he shall remain unclean all the days until as the infection is unclean. He shall live alone, his dwelling shall be outside the camp. And I mean, cover the mustache, then you're also covering your mouth. Mm -hmm. They are preventing the spread of that germ. Yeah. But, you know, when you look at this and you're like, you cannot walk away and be like, this is not like, this is not like, how did like, God just made, God didn't just make it on rules. He's making like rules so that they don't die. Like kind of like when your pet and your parents said, "Don't put your hand in the snow." They're not making up a rule. Don't put your hand in the snow. They are. They are making sure that they won't. They're looking out for what your well-being. Um. So another one of the great things in Leviticus is God did not leave like it's not just rule like uh never strict you. Uh, he also has these rules about. Like party, so if I can get you at Leviticus twenty three, uh, God has all these uh, parties and festivals and feasts, and uh, uh, and the first one that we can look at is the uh, Passover. Uh, these are the appointed times and the whole thing in Rockin, but you tell me. <laughs> You shall proclaim at the time appointed for them in the first month on the on the fourteenth day of the month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. Then on the fifteenth day of the same month there is a feast of unleavened bread to the Lord. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy concoction, and you shall do no labor at work. But for seven days you shall present offering by fire to the Lord. And on the seventh day. In the holy concoction, and you shall do no labor for it. So here you have God setting up like time to remember and time to rest and time to like uh, to enjoy uh, the fruit, fruit of his labor. And then you can look at well, then again, uh, 23 9. Here is God for the first fruit, and and there you get uh, another like another feat. And he continues on. Uh, uh, there's like five or six of them here. Uh, and you have the Feast of Wheat, and the Feast of Trumpet, and the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Booth, which is like seven days of celebrating and the Feast of the Lord. Like, uh, so there you have like, not only do you get to like come together and like eat food and, and celebrate, and but you're doing it. To God, uh, and and that's just like that's awesome. Like, when when have you ever gotten together? Like, so you know, a party. Like, in my day, it's like you know, the party was always something that took you away from God, or you, know, you needed alcohol, or you needed uh, you needed things that, that that would separate you from God. And here you had uh, not having a feast and a festival, and and it, it hit it, you know. Uh, and, and it, it, it glorifying him. Um, you know, when, when it work, you know, it's crazy how, how God has, has set this all up uh, for us. And then, you know, God didn't, God wasn't like the slave labor of Egypt either. If you see in, uh, in chapter well, 23 and 25, you know, he has this Sabbath day where you're not supposed to do any labor and, and you're supposed to rest and and take the time and, and, and focus on God. Uh, and especially in our day, I know me, I'm super tempted to not take a day and not, you know, not do any work and, and just not try and, uh, you know, 
trying not to get involved in anything that day, that you get too wavery. Uh, and then you have this sabbatical year. Every seven years, he says, if you play the rest, and you more have to, you're not out there, like, sowing and reaping and, and, uh, and plowing the field. Like, you're supposed to get the land of rest. Um, and it says in, uh, in chapter 25 that if, uh, if, if you're worried about what will happen in the seventh year, that you won't be able to eat, he'll bless you so much in the sixth year that you'll have stuff to eat to the ninth year. Like, uh, what, what, where in, like, how crazy is that? So God will bless you with four years worth of, worth of food. Like, you'll still be eating of the same things in the ninth year. Like, you know, if I stop working right now, I'm not going to eat in three weeks from now. You know, like, there's no going to be issues. You know? Uh, so, like, how, how crazy is that? That God is, is, is setting this all up so that, that we can dwell in him. And, and, uh, and he's setting up all these rules that try to bring us together. And then you have the year of Jubilee. And where he, you know, all, you know, this is crazy. I just want you to think about this. In our nation right now, there, there's systematic poverty where you have people who, uh, you know, my my granddad was poor, my dad was poor, and I'm going to be poor. And we're going to keep living in this trailer until it breaks down. And, <laughs> I, you know, I know those people. And and, uh, and it says every 49 years to restore the property to the tribe. Mm. So you would get back that way. So there's no more systematic poverty. So there's no more... Uh, just, you know, there's no more, I, I, I'm thinking I'm going to be poor for the rest of my life. Every 40 odd years, every 50 years, that property is coming back. So no matter how screwed up you get in the, in those 49 years previous, your, your, your children aren't going to have to suffer the consequences mm, of your actions. That's, that's a good point. And then, so as you can see, God is building, he's building these rules to try and group this nation together, trying and make them better. He's trying to uh, push them forward, and, 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 and he's trying to shape and form them so that they won't fall into these things that they can so easily fall into, and that they did eventually end up falling into. Uh, and, and so, if I can just get, you know, with Vinicius 26, you shall not make for yourself idols, nor shall you set up yourself in image or a sacred pillar, nor shall you place a figure stone in your land to bow down to it. For I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes then keep my commandments, so as to carry them out, then I shall give you your, your reign and their season, so that the land will yield its fruit, produce, and the trees in the field will bear their fruit. Indeed, the threshing will last for you until the great gathering, and the great gathering will last until the snowing comes. You will not eat your food in the full and live securely in your land. And I, I shall also grant keep in that land, so that you may lie down with no one making you tremble. I shall also eliminate harmful seeds from the land and no sword shall pass through your land but you will chase your enemies and they will fall for you on the sword five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand and your enemies will fall for you on the sword so I will turn towards you and make you fruitful and multiply and I will conform my covenant with you you will eat the old supply wear out the old become the new Moreover, I will bring, moreover, I will make my dwelling among you, and my soul will re not reject you. I will also walk among you and be your God, hmm. and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, so that you would not be their slave. And I broke the bars of your yoke and made you walk around. All right. Now, if you look at this, if you look at this passage, God is shaping and forming this. And, and you know what kind of reminds me of? Is, uh, is when uh, God started forming the earth. And, and he started forming the earth and he created the earth and he, he created man. And he, 
he painted and formed them together, right? Uh, and he set up this, this paradise where he was supposed to, to walk amongst men, and he was supposed to dwell with them, and he was supposed to, it, you know, from the essence of this, what I'm seeing is, I'm seeing a God who wants a relationship, who's saying, you know, he, he, he wants to be there with his people, that I will, I will also walk among you and be your God, and you shall be my people. I'm not seeing uh, a God over overbearing. I'm not seeing a, a ruler just making rules for his, his people. I'm not seeing a, uh, a commander just, uh, you know, making rules and trying to make them as good as he can make them. I'm seeing a God who's shaping and making things. And then in, in, in Revelation 21, you have God is once again saying, come back, you know, I, I, will, I will dwell amongst you. Mm. You know, I will be there. Mm. And then, you know, you know, and you can see that in this passage, he's doing this with this nation of Israel. He's trying to to shape and form them like he will, like he did in Genesis, and like he's going to do in Revelation. This strange that you know in Leviticus forty, if you know, I have to read this. If they confess their iniquities and their iniquity of their forefathers and their unfaithful with what they committed against me, also in acting in hostility against me. I also was acting with hostility against them to bring them into the land of their enemy. Or if their uncertain heart, uncertain heart become humble so that they make and make amends for their iniquity. Then I will remember my covenant with Jacob, and I will remember also my covenant with Isaac. And my covenant with Abraham as well. And I will remember the land. For the land will be will be abandoned by them and will make up its sadness. They meanwhile will be making amends for their iniquity because they rejected my ordinances and their soul afford my statue. Yet in spite of this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them, nor will I so afford them as to destroy them bring my covenant with them. For I am the Lord their God, and I will remember them for the I, I will remember for them the covenant with their ancestors whom I brought out of the land of Egypt in the sight of all all of the in the sight of the nation, that I might be in their God, and I am the Lord their Father. So he said, even if you even if you abandon me again, even if you uh you know even if you forsake me again I will, I will, I will bring you back. I don't, you know, he, he, he's doing one of the return to me, mm, return yes. to me, mm -hmm. come back to me. Mm. All right, he's shaping and forming. But if you, if you fall, return to me. Amen. And Jesus was doing the same thing. He was saying, return to me, Amen. return to me, Amen. return to me, and no. Well, don't let all this sacred form fall for nothing. Mm. He said, come back to me. Amen. Amen. Don't let this fall apart. Come back to me. Mm. Come back to your father. Amen. Wow. And what a wonderful God we have. Yes. Amen. And he, Amen. In, in our iniquity, that he, he still He's still calling for it. He's still saying, come back. And I think, you know, I'm not sure that it ended. I, I, I still riled up there. I lost this. <laughs> um, but You're on a roll. Hallelujah. I just all like the prayer. God, I just want to thank you for all that, all that you do for us and all that you continue to do and for sending your son to, to try and bring back your people, God. And and that uh, and that uh, that we will once again that, that you will be our God and you will flow amongst us, God. And I look forward to that day when when and when I can have a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. and, and, in the name of Christ, I pray, amen. 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 Hallelujah.